All right, so we are back, and it is fight week, baby! Woo! Woo! Okay, a little too much, a little lightheaded, but we're good. <laughs> That's right, listen, it's fight week, and all week I am bringing you bangers. I got interviews, we got open workout breakdown, press conference breakdown, final picks and predictions, and finally, a live stream on Saturday. Wade Concept Watch Party, I think we'll be live around 5 or 6. Regardless, it's going to be one of the biggest we've ever done, so you do not want to miss it. But today, we're talking about Jake Paul's final training footage, because this footage, in my opinion, holds answers as to why Jake Paul and his team have been radio silent. Think about every Jake Paul fight we've ever had. He is talking nonstop. I mean, it's more lip service than the entire Kardashian family has gotten over the last decade. This time's been different. The biggest question is, why? Breakdown, let's go. All right, so it says that this was during Jake Paul's camp on September 29th. That will be a month before the fight, so this was... Four weeks out. He was in the roast beef of his camp. In other words, I'm talking the meat, the thick of things. I'm sorry. I don't know why I chose that as a reference or what the f*** is wrong with me. <laughs> I mean, that right hand. If you're Anderson, this is the shot, right? Everybody knows it. Bang. Bang. That's the one. Jake doesn't sit down on this one as much as he does most of his right hands because most of them are overhands, right? He throws that massive overhand right. I actually like this shot more. It's more balance to it. He's not putting everything behind it, right? He's sticking that shot. Chin protected by the shoulder. Lead hand is there as well, right? He's not overthrown. He's still on balance. Ready to go again. Pops out the jab. Bang. The only thing I don't like is where the jab ends up, right? Boom. Right there. When Jake does pop his jab out, even in the Tyron Woodley fights, he was getting mad with a counter right hand outside of that jab, right? The difference here is he's fighting Anderson, who does have great timing, but he's a southpaw. So Jake pops that jab and drops it. You might see Anderson step in with that lead uppercut, which he did to Julio Cesar Chavez. There's more opportunities there for Anderson to counter, and when he does counter, he's deadly accurate. Mm. I want you guys to listen one more time to this because it, Jake threw those hooks so hard, it sounded like he threw up in the middle of the combination. <laughs> I mean, these are great hooks, by the way. I'm, I'm laughing just because of the sound. But these are phenomenal hooks, and I think they're going to play a big role in this fight. But let's hear that one more time. <laughs> He's <laughs> sounding like some gastrointestinal issues going on. But honestly, these shots can f*** with your intestines. Look at these hooks, man. This is good work. Double hook. Boom. First one. Gets a little high on it, right? But the second one he really sits down on. Bang. And that one comes across. Great. You see Jake dipping that head, right? And it's it's great him getting his head off the center line as he jabs. That's perfect. But if you get into this rhythm of sliding that head off the center line, again, against a southpaw fighter, when you jab and pull that head down against an orthodox fighter, it's to get your head off the center for something down the lane. Off the center, off the center. The problem is when you do the same versus a southpaw fighter, you're essentially putting your head on the center line for that straight left hand down the pipe. Just something that you don't want to do continuously, right? You want to make sure you show no patterns to a guy like Anderson Silva because once he picks up on them and you continue, he's going to throw shots as window dressing to walk you on to the shot behind it, which will be that left hand. Work in the clinch. I think it'll be a little different here with Anderson. I said Anderson should look to those same over grips, should get Jake and pin him in that clinch, but I think Jake in this fight doesn't have to deal with the big grappling experience and just the tight rigid power its range will be where he is most effective jake working on the reflex bag here if you are jake and you do want to jab and obviously you want to move your head off these shots and you he's changing level here but if you're gonna do that the thing we talked about a second ago this is the way you do it. This is a great change in tendencies where, yes, he throws his jab. Yes, he moves his head, but the guard comes up for a parry, right? Different things to throw off tendencies. The jab with the head movement, the level change jab, the jab with the head movement, and the high guard. All this stuff while moving to his left, changing direction. That's good. That's what you have to implement. Different looks for Anderson. When you work the reflex bag like this, you see Jake just kind of flowing. By the way, we do get a look at what I think are going to be some version of Jake's trunks on the night. And you guys know I'm not some big fashion guy so I don't understand exactly what I'm looking at but by this visual I'm assuming that Jake will be walking out with a box of wildberry pop tarts I, I don't know that's the color I'm getting here <laughs> that lead hand it's something I've been saying now since this fight was announced not just his jab that's obviously important but 
the hook. Because Anderson is a southpaw, and because sometimes he does get a little over-aggressive and throws those flurry combinations running forward, it does feel like Jake and their team want to utilize this one, maybe even more so than his big right hand. This is going to sound like some kind of mind fuckery from Inception, but they, Jake's team, know that we, the people, Anderson's team, everybody on the face of the planet that knows Jake Paul boxes, we know that he, Jake Paul, has a massive right hand. And because they know we know, I think that opens up opportunities. But Anderson, being technically sound, being experienced, being well studied of his opponents, will know that right hand's there, which opens up the lane for the left hook. I think that's the shot. I think that's the gambit. That's the one they want to go to. And that is why they're working in that close to medium range, doubling up hooks. But if that didn't convince you enough, there is one more clip. Let's take a look. All right, so there's a reason I want to watch this clip specifically. Let's play it through, and then I'll, I'll tell you guys what I mean. Nice hook. Boom, boom. Jab, jab, right? So why would I want to watch that clip specifically, right? Jake's just moving his shoulders out. My guy BJ Flores is in the background, definitely texting some honeys right now. Like, there's not a lot of attention being paid to what Jake's doing specifically in this moment. But I think that's because... This has become second nature. Nothing looks labored or forced from Jake anymore. This is something they've worked on for years at a time. So it is now in his muscle memory to be able to roll his shoulders out and not get as tired. He's obviously been doing this workout for a while because the sweat on his shirt has made an outline of what looks like the Appalachian Mountains and sweat is flying in the air like Triple H when he spits out the fucking water before his match. But the point is, look at how he finishes every combination. Boom, with the hook. Boom, with the hook. Boom, with the hook. Every single combination finished with the hook. This is why I said it. They want to work mid to close range. Why? So they can get to this range where he can bang those uppercuts. Boom. Turn the hook over. Boom. Turn the hook over again. In that close range, it looks like they want to open up a f***ing can. Bang. Bang. And then we go back to the big right hand. Boom. Bang, bang. Boom. The big power shots sitting down. Where Jake used to sit down on every shot, like a big right hand from out of range that he would step into, and yeah, it would land versus Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley and Nate Robinson. That can't be the way you beat Anderson Silva. He's seen too much. He's too experienced. He's a fucking really good boxer, and you'll open yourself up to the counter shots that Tyron and Ben and any of the other guys couldn't land. Anderson absolutely will, in combination, in succession, for the entirety of the fight. So if you're Jake and this team, how do you combat all that? Well, look at the footage we just watched. At range, he's working his jab right hand. He's not overthrowing. He's very much on balance, very much aware of where his hands are. We get closer and those hooks come out and the uppercuts come out. Jake changes that level. Hands go higher. Long to mid to close range, Jake and their team want to beat Anderson at his own game. It sounds crazy. On paper, it is crazy, but something is telling them they can outbox at range, in close, medium range. They can out Anderson, Anderson. And I don't know how they're going to do that, but what you can see is Jake has improved in all three areas, long, medium, and close. So I guess that's where we leave it. It's only Tuesday of fight week, so we have a lot more to get through. Maybe we get a little bit more information in the open workouts and the press conference, maybe in an interview I just did. So stay tuned, but I'll leave you guys with this question. Can Jake Paul outbox Anderson Silva? I don't have those answers, but that's just the thing. Everyone has the answer until the fight begins. So what happens on fight night? I guess we'll find out.